Hi, welcome to the video for edX Physics Past Paper Solution. Uh, it is October 2017. So let's start. Question number one Which of the following SI unit is only used with a vector quantity? So if you see the option, we need to find the unit which is only used for vector quantity. So this second is for time which is uh, scalar meter cube is the unit of volume then it says again a scalar meter second inverse it can be used for uh, velocity but it's also the unit of a speed which is a scalar so meter second inverse can be used for uh, for a vector and then as well as a scalar but meter second inverse, uh, meter second minus two, this is the unit of acceleration. So this is a vector quantity. So your option is B. Question number two, an athlete runs a race around half of a circular track of radius uh, 30 meter using the inside lane. Uh, at the end of the race, uh, what is the uh, magnitude of the displacement of the athlete from the starting point so it's all about displacement and displacement is the shortest distance shortest distance between starting and end point If you see the situation this is the start point and this is your end point that means your shortest distance is this and clearly this is the diameter of the circle which is uh, 60 meter the displacement must be 60 meters so option is B A ball of mass 0.04 kg is dropped from a height of 1.5 meter. Uh, what is kinetic energy? So when the ball is dropped, that's from some height. At the top, object has only gravitational potential energy, GPE, which is uh, MGH. As ball starts falling down, gravitational potential energy decreases. And the kinetic energy increases okay so at close to the ground GPs has all almost zero is about to zero and all the GP has converted into kinetic energy so if you need to find the kinetic energy before hitting the ground so you just say that kinetic energy is equal to mgh if you put all these numbers mgh and this formula so kinetic energy would be equal to 0 0.5886 joule and uh, after rounding off option is 0 0.59 joule option is d question four an object is dropped from the rest in a vacuum which of the following is the correct graph of velocity v uh, against displacement s so it's the same situation object is dropped from some height or in a vacuum so you know that this is the ground this is the height and now i am not using h as a height because it's a displacement or in place of h I can say this is my displacement as S. So again, half mv square kinetic energy equal to mgh. So m and m cancel, and you can say that v square is equal to 2gs. 2gs. And removing the square so v would be equal to square root of 2 
g s g is acceleration due to gravity uh, our gravitational field is force field strength which is a constant value so v is directly proportional to root s and if you recall your maths uh, graph of y is equal to root x the graph of y is equal to root x y is on the y axis values of x if you plot this your curve would be something like this so your relation has a similar concept as y equal to root x meaning your graph must be c so your option is c Question number five, as raindrop falls, fall, they reach the terminal velocity, okay? Which of the following properties has negligible effect on the terminal velocity of uh, a raindrop? So when the raindrop, when a raindrop is falling, this raindrop is acted by three forces, mainly at the terminal velocity, one force is the weight and the other one is the up thrust and the you have drag force and for condition of terminal velocity weight must be equal to sum of drag plus up thrust weight is the weight of the raindrop which is mass of the raindrop into g drag you can use a stokes law 6 pi eta r v plus up thrust is the force due to fluid which is rho v g and in this equation overall this mass of the of the raindrop can be rewrite in in, in re, uh, can be rewritten in term of uh, density like uh, rho r v g now from this equation clearly you need density of the raindrop so you need density of the water you need viscosity of the air okay so you need viscosity of the air and this is um, viscosity of the air but viscosity of the water so you don't need viscosity okay you don't need viscosity of the water because you need volume of the raindrop why you need volume of the raindrop uh, because in this equation you need radius or uh, you're talking about volume this is the volume of the raindrop so you need the volume only thing that you don't you 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 can ignore or negligible effect is viscosity of the water so your option is c Question number six, seashells are the protective outer casing of some sea creatures. The shell is left behind when the creature dies uh, and the shell is moved around the seabed by, by the tides and waves. Uh, shells washed up on the beach are found to be as smooth as uh, when the creature was alive. This is because material from which the shell is made is okay so after a long time shell are found as smooth as long time ago meaning there is no change there would in in the surface that means uh, the shells are really uh, hard material to indent so your option must be a Question number seven. Power forces act 
uh, on an athlete running at a constant velocity which of the following free body diagrams uh, correctly shows the forces acting on the athlete okay so this is the athlete and uh, in this option you immediately you can ignore option a and option c immediately why is that the reason is because the athlete is running on a horizontal floor or ground whatever you say in this case the normal reaction should uh, normal reaction acts perpendicularly this is n and in option a and option b n is not 90 uh, acting perpendicularly so that's why you can ignore a and c and if you see the option d option d shows that uh, the runner or, or, or athlete has some resultant force in a left 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 direction so this is the resultant force resultant force mean uh, it shows that there must be some acceleration but in question in the condition they are saying that athlete is running with a constant velocity that means acceleration must be zero resultant force according to Newton law second law resultant force must be zero and first law says that uh, all the forces should be balanced that means if you see the diagram B free body diagram so W and N they are balancing or cancelling F and R they are balanced so your option is B question number eight a bird flies with a velocity of four meter per second through air heading due south due the uh, due to the wind the air is moving three meter per second from east to west magnitude of the resultant velocity this is typical question of a vector addition this is the bird moving or flying uh, southward with the velocity of four meter per second and uh, the uh, wind is bl blowing or moving from east to west so this is the wind and you need to find the resultant and clearly resultant would be in that direction this is the resultant velocity v and this resultant velocity v you can find using pythagoras theorem p theorem why because four and three these two vectors are acting at 90 degree so you can say that your velocity v is 3 square plus 4 square root uh, it's a root so v is equal to uh, 9 plus 16 25 25 root is 5 5 meter second inverse which is option is c Question number nine. A ski lift carries the skiers along a 450 meter slope that is at an incline of 25 degree to the horizontal. Okay, it can be assumed that motor has to lift an average additional mass of 80 kg for each skier uh, using the ski lift. Which of the following expression represent the work done against gravity when lifting an individual skier? This is all about work done against gravity. So work done against the gravity means if some object is moving vertically upward against the gravity, then the work done is equal to the gravitational potential energy gained. In this case, scales are moving along the slope, but in order to find the work done against the gravity we need to find the vertical height and if you see this vertical height is you can use this right angle triangle because in this case hypotenuse is 450 meter and this edge is is 450 sine 25 this is your height so you can say that your work done against the gravity is mgh m g h m is uh, 80 kg yes so 80 times g and h h is 450 sine 25 times 4 
50 sine 25 so option cos yes the option is is d question number 10 three identical spring l m and n are connected as shown a spring n has a load attached to its lower end the extension of l is x because l all are identical and l and m are attached side by side and n is uh, attached at the middle of these two so they must have the same extension so if l has extension x then m must has extension x so your you can immediately ignore your option b so you can have a c and d so both have a l and m have a same extension but n is attached n to n and in this case uh, stiffness of the system n to n i'm talking about n to n n to n is stiffness is decrease so the extension in n should be greater greater than this combination so it cannot be equal because it is not side by side is n to n and it cannot be smaller and it should be greater which is of course 2x so your option is d Thank you very much that's it for this video i hope uh, you enjoyed see you in the next one thanks